Welcome, this is Hugh Massey, the CEO and founder of DNA Behaviour International. In today's webinar, I'm going to talk about identifying the risk profile of the client. Identifying the risk profile is not a simple matter and it requires uh, integrating a number of behavioural factors that are identified from the financial DNA discovery process with a number of financial elements. It is not a singular exercise. One of the reasons that we built uh, financial DNA was in our view the recognition that the traditional investment risk uh, tolerance profile is not satisfactory. It only provides a singular measurement of uh, who the client is and uh, the risk they're prepared to take and very often the question is uh, situational in nature. And what we wanted to do in the financial DNA uh, discovery process was to look at all of the uh, uh, personality factors of the client which we've been addressing so far in, in, in the webinar series and also get to the risk profile at a much deeper uh, level and recognise that risk isn't just the investment risk profile, it's, it's every dimension of the client's behaviour. In terms of uh, the risk profile construction, um, utilising the right data, which we believe that uh, the financial DNA discovery uh, process uh, provides, then the operational best practices are, uh, one, firstly is that the uh, financial DNA natural behaviour discovery, uh, which we're addressing in this uh, webinar series and uh, the training programs, uh, you know, the level one behaviour, the nature uh, determination is done up front and one time only. Um, and it makes, you know, what many people say uh, is subjective discovery, you know, in terms of the risk profile, far more objective. So if you do consider that uh, uncovering the risk profile is subjective, then our approach is making it more objective. Uh, there will be a uh, very uh, high level of reliability at 91% based on the, uh, the psychometric uh, measurement, the validation studies. Uh, it, you know, I'm emphasising again, this is the reversion uh, to uh, the client's go-to place in terms of uh, uh, how they will react in uh, pressure situations and their long-term thinking and commitment to uh, uh, the portfolio. So the financial DNA natural behaviour discovery is only done once, but annually the uh, uh, financial, what we call the financial personality or learned behaviour discovery uh, can be done uh, each year to see how the client uh, style is changing um, in the different circumstances that they're in. And so this will be more indicative of their short-term thinking, which is uh, really what the learned behavioural situational behaviour discovery is all about. And what we like to do is a gap analysis between the, uh, uh, the natural behaviour and the learned behaviour, uh, or between the nature and the nurture, to see where those gaps are and uh, to work with that. And, and you know, in some cases, the uh, a large gap is a, is an issue. Uh, in other cases, it uh, actually shows uh, uh, that there's been development or uh, you know a positive uh, attitudinal or perception shift, and uh, and then you know the information is assimilated from this and and built into the IPS. Again, uh, this is all about asking uh, you know setting up the facilitation to ask the right questions. Here are all the elements of uh, the risk profile uh, that need to be um, to, con to be considered. Again, this is, goes back to the point as to why I've always emphasised that uh, understanding the risk profile of the client is not just knowing one number, which is you know that number is uncovered from a, a, a traditional investment risk profile. It's a singular number. We need to understand firstly the client's uh, risk need. So the risk they require, that is required to meet their financial goals. This is a financial calculation, which is often determined using uh, financial planning software. What's their risk capacity? 
what's the financial ability, not the emotional ability, but the financial ability to endure the risks of portfolio losses. That's a very important number to uh, to understand. Not an, often and not enough work's done with that. And then we get to the behavioural elements, which is the risk propensity, the willingness to take risk, the risk tolerance in our language is the willingness to live with losses, uh, the loss the, the loss aversion against a slightly different number, um, and what's the likelihood of the client to maintain their investments in down markets and not crystallise the loss, um, the risk composure, uh, how will the client behave uh, in um, a crisis, and their risk perception, which is more uh, subjective judgments about uh, uh, what they think the severity of uh, risk risk is in the current climate, um, and then the risk preferences uh, is their own uh, personal evaluation of risk, and you know to build up the risk profile. Then all of these elements here, from a, a natural behaviour discovery and a uh, uh, the learned behavioural financial personality discovery, uh, the second phase, the uh, um, the more situational discovery uh, is then all brought together to determine the actual risk profile, and that was what, that that is what will ultimately play into the portfolio build up for the client. And so we can see here that uh, you know how we build the um, uh, uh, behavioural based portfolio uh, is particularly looking at the uh, the risk propensity and the risk tolerance. But we would also uh, recommend that it, it, it brings in the, uh, the other financial elements that I was just talking about. But the report will show this table, which is a blending of these two items here. Again, emphasising that we separately measure the risk propensity and the risk tolerance because in our experience they're different behaviours. And what we found is that uh, in 20% um, of the cases, the risk tolerance uh, is different to the um, uh, risk propensity, um, and so that makes itself for an interesting uh, uh, conversation. And here's what I would call the, uh, in this graphic here, the advisor nightmare uh, or the Molotov cocktail, where the advisor, where the client's um, risk propensity for taking chances is far higher than the risk tolerance for living with the losses. So this is the type of client that will jump into something but then will uh, feel emotionally hurt when it doesn't work out. This graphic here is uh, very uh, relevant um, because it's, it sort of demonstrates uh, using the portfolio groupings uh, below here, which um, you know start at, uh, in the middle at group four and go either up or down. Uh, is, is, is how we bring all of these key elements together to, to finally determine the, uh, the risk profile that will be used uh, by the advisor for the portfolio. Um, so again, we look at the, um, uh, we always suggest that uh, an advisor looks at the, uh, the risk that sits inside the client's current portfolio. The general proposition is, and what we tend to see based on observation is that uh, there's too much risk inside the portfolio and the clients don't really understand that. And that really is in a way driving the, the planning needs. So this is not a bad exercise, is to, to, to gauge how much risk is inside the client's current portfolio and then look at the, uh, the risk need, which is re relative to their uh, goals, their uh, risk capacity, which is a very important uh, number. Uh, and then we look at the behaviours being the natural behaviour and the, uh, the learned behaviour in terms of the risk taking. And ultimately, uh, we don't uh, believe that the clients need to take uh, a higher risk uh, um, in their portfolio than the risk need to achieve their goals, and they certainly shouldn't be going higher than the risk capacity. So why take more risk than you need to? And certainly it should never be higher than the risk capacity. Uh, that's, that's, that's a very important number, and then we can look at the behaviour. Of course, where there are gaps between <coughs> the behaviour and, and what is financially needed, then, then the expectations need to be managed, which again comes back to the conversation. And then finally, the advisor will, based on understanding all of these uh, pieces of information here, blend, blend in uh, them together to determine the risk profile that will ultimately be taken. So this is where 
you can see that the risk profile group is not higher than the risk need because the client doesn't need any more risk. But again, this will be after conversations with the client that then get documented. The key thing is that all of these elements are discussed with the client and it's documented uh, for future reference. And so, um, again, I'm just emphasizing in this graphic that um, you know, once you understand the concept of natural behavior, that it's the client's go-to position, it's their default behavior under pressure, um, then you know, we, sh we shouldn't be building portfolios that are, that are uh, outside of that by uh, one grouping up or down because otherwise the uh, emotional management will get, will, will, be get, will get higher and we need to align that to the client's uh, risk need and their risk capacity. And then in these tables here, uh, we, which are at the back of the, uh, the financial DNA summary report, um, we, we provide uh, more insights as to uh, what the, the seven groups need I mean, um, and this analysis in, in these tables has been uh, built up from uh, the European uh, ESMA uh, rating uh, system that's used there uh, by, by the, uh, the European Regulatory Authority. So uh, European financial planners are uh, are using this type of information to uh, to build the portfolios for their clients. Uh, what we've found is it's the most documented and, and, and uh, uh, clearest um, analysis that can be used for assigning um, the risk profile to a, to a portfolio uh, with any uh, meaning and boundaries. And this table here is just looking at you know how you would adapt the portfolio. Uh, based on a number of uh, the more the learned behaviour or subjective factors that, that might be uh, needed to uh, be taken into account. So what someone's uh, perception of the markets um, can be important and you know if someone's got a bullish perception of the market they may be uh, motivated to invest higher than their natural risk behaviour. And again you know what I'm really drawing in here is that uh, when clients are investing above or below their natural uh, risk levels, then uh, you as the advisor need to be very careful because uh, there could be more emotional management um, that will be required uh, with the client. And I've always believed that the, the client's uh, um, level of financial experience and what those financial experiences are is very important to understand and also what their level of uh, financial uh, education is. And I would distinguish between investment education and knowledge versus uh, pure financial knowledge. So for example, an accountant uh, may not always be uh, that astute with investments because it's not something that they're used to doing on a day-in, day-out basis in dealing with financial markets. So in the next uh, uh, webinar, we will be talking more about how we apply the risk profile uh, to building a behavioral investment portfolio.